Bill Bratton and I grew up in the city with the oldest police department in America. We both grew up in the Dorchester section of Boston, which was home to many members of the Boston Police Department in those days, including my father, who was a Boston police patrolman. And so it came as nothing less than a shock to me to read in Bill Bratton's new book about policing called The Profession, this fact of his childhood. Quote, I didn't know any cops. No one in my family was a cop. I didn't know anyone who didn't know any cops. But Bill Bratton is the only cop I know whose ambition to wear the badge began with a book, a 1956 picture book called Your Police, which was a child's history of the New York Police Department, the biggest police department in America, the department that little Billy Bratton would grow up to run twice, two different tours of duty for two different New York City mayors. The first New York City mayor who Bill Bratton served is now someone he does not recognize, named Rudolph Giuliani. When Bill Bratton returned from military service in Vietnam, he joined the Boston Police Department in 1970. He rose to the top of that department and served as Boston's police commissioner before serving as the NYPD commissioner and then the chief of police in Los Angeles. No one in the history of American law enforcement has run three of our biggest police departments. No one in the history of American law enforcement has the experience in police work that Bill Bratton does from patrol officer all the way up through the ranks to commissioner of three departments. Bill Bratton had a right to think that he had seen it all, but then he saw the video of Derek Chauvin's knee on George Floyd's neck. In the profession, Bill Bill Bratton writes, quote, George Floyd's murder, and it was 100 percent a murder, was one of the worst things I have ever seen done to a person by a police officer at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, when most of the nation was shut indoors, fearful, alone, in need of human contact and reexamining the actual functioning of society. It seemed to encapsulate all that was wrong with the way America was being ruled and the people who were ruling it. It showed a bad cop doing a terrible thing. The terrible death of George Floyd brought the awareness of systemic racism to the surface. A month earlier, you would have been hard pressed to find more than one senator or network anchor or elected official willing to say it out loud, let alone go on camera and admit to its existence. And joining us now is Bill Bratton. His new book is The Profession, a memoir of community, race, and the arc of policing in America. Commissioner, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I, I want to go to that passage in your book about uh, George Floyd and, and ask, what did it feel like? What was, what was your gut when you were watching that nine-minute video for the first time? Uh, I was incredulous, uh, dismayed. Uh, like most of America, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Uh, but there it was. And it went on and on and on. And the image of that officer's face uh, as he looked at all those people that were yelling at him, pleading with him. Uh, I don't think any of us will ever get over that, 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 that facial expression that never changed. That, and it just said, why are you bothering me? Leave me alone. It, again, uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, you make a point uh, in your book uh, repeatedly uh, that I made in a book uh, back when you were still uh, patrolling the streets of Boston. I wrote a book it, called it, Deadly, Deadly Force. Deadly, as, Deadly Force. As you know. I know it very and, well. And I quoted a Chicago patrolman at the time. This is 1980 when he told me this. And he said this, this quote. He said, cops, this is Howard Saffold, a Chicago patrolman, said to me, cops can do things in a minute or a second that will sour a community for a generation. And you and I in the country have been seeing that happen uh, repeatedly. And, and this, the George Floyd case is the latest and biggest version of that, is the way it sours a community and sours police relations with a community, not just for that year, not just for the year that people are marching, but for the next 
20 years of the life experience of the people who see that? Well, what he saw at uh, the relationship was not just a community, Minneapolis, but in the nation. And indeed, when you look at the demonstrations around the world, around the world, incredible. But I have a mantra that I talk about in the book that I first used in L.A. in 2003. Cops count, police matter. I tell my cops that the individual action of a cop counts. The action of a department matters. In the case of George Floyd, his actions really did count in such a negative way. And it just painted with such a broad brush, a negative image of police profession around the world. Incredible, the actions of one man. And it was not in a moment or a minute. It was eight, almost nine minutes that that action occurred. I want to get your reaction to uh, a federal court uh, judge's ruling in California because you served as the L.A. police chief and you served in a state that had an assault weapons ban, still does. Uh, This federal judge just overturned it, a San Diego federal judge, and his first sentence of his opinion is this. Like the Swiss Army knife, the popular AR-15 rifle is a perfect combination of home defense weapon and homeland defense equipment. That's from Judge Robert Benitez. Uh, What is your reaction to that? He's an idiot. The idea of using language like that, comparing a Swiss army knife to what is basically a machine gun that many people uh, possess in this country, hundreds of thousands of these weapons, compare it to a Swiss army knife, it's out of his mind. Uh, I want to take a look at your... Uh, your graduation photo from the police academy in 1970, uh, which we had up on the screen for a moment, uh, because, you know, it looks a lot like my father's graduation photo from uh, 20 years earlier from the academy. And uh, the, the both, both of those pictures, my father's and yours, uh, it's basically all white. Uh, it is a very different uh, police department uh, than what those academy graduation photos look like now. Uh, w- what has What are the most important changes you have seen uh, since you graduated from the academy in police work and in the composition of who is doing our police work now? That class, there were about 158 of us, one of the largest classes in the history of the department. There were three minorities in the class. In a department of 2,800 officers, there were 55 blacks, I think, uh, who all actually for a while assigned to one unit called the Soul Patrol, if you can imagine. Uh, The book is all about the idea of the reforms that have occurred. I use the expression from Blaine Gary Gunn-Moss, always be selling. Policing is like the medical profession. It's always going to be reforming, always going to be changing. And I write about the reforms of the last 50 years, and we've come so far where we were, uh, where we are, and where we need to be. And we don't get enough credit for those reforms. In fact, I can describe what happened after Floyd as the Etch-a-Sketch moment, where all the reforms that we had accomplished, including minority-majority police departments in Los Angeles, New York, Boston is almost there, uh, in the space of 50 years, we changed more than America changed in many respects, that we led the way in terms of acceptance of gays eventually, women coming into the business in the 70s. And we don't get any credit for that. We don't get credit for the tremendous reduction in use of force by police organizations over those 50 years. In New York City, cops were shooting at people 900 times a year in the 70s in response to 12 of them being killed every year. And last year, there were about 26 uh, gun battle incidents in the city of New York, 35,000 cops, city of 8 million people, 25 or 26 incidents. uh, In the United States, almost 700,000 cops in the country, on an average year, they fire their weapons 3,000 times. 3,000 times in 10 million arrest situations and 70 million encounters. They don't get credit for the good that has occurred. Uh, In New York City, we reduced significantly the numbers of arrests, reduced the jail population, thus resulted in the reduction in the state prison population. What I try to do in the book is present a balanced perspective that we need so much more reform, but we have reformed much more than we're given credit for. Uh, 